classical guitar. And it's more flexible because the top is thinner. It's about 2.5 millimeters thick. It has less dome. The top is always has some dome in it. And, uh, and it has less bracing. There's, there's five or seven braces underneath here to support, support the top. And then the neck angle is different. On a classical guitar, this neck angle is different. <laughs> Okay, this guitar uh, was made for me by Felix Monsonetto in Madrid, and he uh, uh, worked for Jose Ramirez for 14 years and then went out on his own in the early 60s. It's uh, made, the, t the top is made out of Spanish cypress. Uh, it's 35 years old. Uh, the top here is made out of a German spruce. And then there's, there's a mosaic here, which is very time consuming to make. It has thousands of little pieces. Uh, these also has fusteros. On Spanish guitars, one of the interesting things is that every good maker has a different head. So you can recognize the guitars by the head. And then, of course, on the inside, there's, uh, there's a signature on each one. This is an unusual instrument because he was experimenting with the, the bridge shape uh, because the bridge shape determines the sound also. And this guitar also has, which uh, you probably can't see very well, it has a clear plastic um, tap plate, and that's why in flamenco, what we, we do is we wind up keeping time by uh, by tapping on the top of the guitar. So this is one of the five great makers from Spain, and uh, he, Felix has been a friend of mine for a long time. He, when I was going to school in Spain one summer, he wanted me to be his apprentice when I was 18, but I came back and to school and went and got my anthropology degrees. All right, uh, now I'm going to show you my Portuguese guitar. Uh, this is this is a Portuguese guitar, and this is nice, uh, in, in Portuguese it's called guitarra portuguesa. It's uh, technically a kind of cittern, and it's used for playing fado music. Uh, so th the Portuguese have a tradition of making instruments like the Spanish. Uh, the Spanish guitar in Portuguese is called viola, uh, which is strange, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, Why so, is it strange? Well, because um, <laughs> mo in most places in the world, the guitar is called the guitar. Right. Okay, so this is because that one is not called the guitarilla. It's not called the guitarilla because uh, there are guitarillas, but they have uh, the, the backs look like a Spanish guitar. Okay. All right, and uh, the Portuguese invented also the ukulele was brought from Portugal to um, to Hawaii, and so the Portuguese have had a lot of influence also in, in South American music. All right, this instrument uh, is used for playing Portuguese fado. <laughs> And it's tuned, has a very strange tuning. Uh, it's D, A, B, E, A, B. And, and it's played in, in quite a different manner. The Spanish guitar is played like this, and the Portuguese guitar is played like this. Uh, you can see old paintings, uh, Renaissance paintings of angels playing lutes, and they're always playing like this. And we use a special stroke called the, the dedillo, which is, is the index finger goes back and forth.
how many lives a person need to play like to that? To learn like, oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, I sat in front of a man for four years when he was playing this. I, I went to Montreal and I met this Portuguese man who was 30 years older than me. His name was Arthur Geipo. I was about 23. And uh, I met him in this Spanish restaurant and I had my Spanish guitar and he said, can I play? And so uh, we played together and then the next day he said, come and see me and I need somebody uh, to accompany me. So I spent four years accompanying him on the Spanish guitar because this instrument is always played as a duet with uh, the Spanish guitar. Uh, and so he introduced me to Portuguese culture in Montreal. There were, there were 40,000 Portuguese at the time in Montreal. And uh, this was in uh, the early 1970s and uh, they were still, uh, the Portuguese people were still under a fascist government and there was a, a number of political movements in Montreal. And so uh, for four years I wound up performing, uh, we did some TV and we made records and, and we accompanied a lot of singers, fado singers. Um, and then I, I couldn't get an instrument for many years. I went to Portugal and there weren't any available and I moved to, Montre to Vancouver and I found a man, um, Jose Amaral, who gave me a few lessons and then Arthur Geipo back in Montreal made me an instrument. Uh, eventually, I, when I moved to California, the instrument he made for me cracked, which was, and I put it in the closet and I didn't play it for several years. And when I was, a few years later, I decided I have to learn how to play this before I die. I, un I understood uh, the techniques, and, but there weren't any books. And I spent uh, years, I'd, I'd go to Portugal and eventually I found 14 old method books back to 1870. And then I, I made contacts with uh, many of the famous uh, players in Portugal and I finally found a little company that could make me instruments. So uh, I, I now import some of those and it's a very small part of my business but uh, I have videos on YouTube which shows how to play it and I also have uh, some lessons. So this has been my special hobby and um, so I, I, this past year I came across 1200 old recordings back to 19. 1905, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm transcribing some of these very early uh, Portuguese pieces, and I will bring them back to Lisbon because uh, it seems that there aren't academics who are, are doing this kind of work. So I'm going to reintroduce. I'm going to. The Spanish guy is going to reintroduce Portuguese music to the Portuguese. It's funny. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> funny, but uh, they don't think it's funny. It's because they don't get around to it. Mm -hmm. um, so th this instrument is a qu uh, Coimbra guitarra. There's two kinds. Um, the Coimbra, Coimbra is uh, an old city in the center of Portugal. It has a university that goes back 700 years. I went to a summer course there. And it has uh, this particular teardrop at the top and the scale is 470 millimeters. And then there's another one which is used in Lisbon for playing fado music and it has a scroll up here and it's called a uh, guitarra de Lisboa. And that instrument has a 440 millimeter scale, so it's slightly higher. Uh, but the, the techniques are almost identical. How many instruments do you have? Me? Mm -hmm. um, Not for sale. Yes, yeah, for well, I, I probably have 30 instruments. Uh, I have I, uh, several of these. It was very hard to find any of these. Um, but I would find that people had them in their closets for 30 years, and they never learned how to play them because there weren't uh, resources to learn how to play them. Uh, the Spanish guitars, I, I made a few Spanish guitars and then I, when I was uh, younger I had gone to uh, Miguel Rodriguez in Cordova and bought a few is, of his. And then I bought uh, an American guitar, uh, a very good American flamenco guitar maker, uh, Eugene Clark and a Canadian who makes very good ones. And then I have uh, the Felix Monsonetto. So I have about eight flamenco guitars and about eight of these and then a bunch of other small instruments, uh, a trace cubano which is used for playing Cuban trace, uh, Cuban salsa music, and a cuatro from uh, Venezuela, and some laouds and bandorias, those come from Spain, those, those are very similar to this. Uh, so about... How about many 35. hours per day do you play? I play a little bit every day. Uh, I'm mainly working on, on instruments that I'm, I'm sending out to stores, but I, I devote some part of every day to it. And right now I'm, I'm working on these old transcriptions for this instrument, so I will do some YouTube uh, videos on this. Thank you, Rome, for being in Let It Shine. Uh, yes.